Today on the Bander Says Podcast, we're going to be discussing my favorite media of the last year and also celebrating the end of a terrible 2021. So go ahead and stick around. All right, where do we begin? I suppose the first thing I should say is congratulations on surviving another year. We made it through 2021. I cannot believe that it is already 2022. It's day 666 of two weeks to slow the spread. The time just keeps on flying by and I have no idea where it's going. But we made it through another year. As far as how everything went, not so great, but we're alive. That's all that really matters. We're alive. We found some escapes along the way, and that's really what the theme of everything that I chose is. Kind of, with with a few exceptions. And I suppose the best place to start would be favorite YouTube channels, because that is free. Anybody can go watch them, and maybe one of these will be an escape for you. And the first one is a channel called Cold Ones. It is run by Chad or Anything for Views, and it is co-hosted by Max Mofo. I am sure if you have spent any time on YouTube prior to 2016 or 2017, you will know both of these people. They were part of the iDubs, Filthy Frank, Max Mofo, Anything for View, How to Basic arena, I suppose you could say. And this used to be an interview podcast like Hot Ones. That's why it's called Cold Ones, because they're having beers and getting drunk while interviewing people. Well, because of the pandemic, they had to make a bit of a change into the format, and they started just doing insane things together and getting hammered drunk while they do it. And being that I don't drink, I know, oh, he's talking about that. I get it. It's fun to watch them do the stuff that I don't do anymore. (laughs) And it's really an enjoyable show. They are two incredibly charismatic people in one of the most vulgar ways possible. But I mean that in a very positive way. It's very enjoyable. And they are very likable if you like watching debauchery. The second one is Papa Meat. This is Meat Canyon's second channel. And... Meet Canyon's main channel is absolutely incredible. It's brilliant. Amazing comedy, amazing videos, amazing animation, incredible, amazing, I'm going to say it again, amazing art style. I don't have a very big vocabulary. But Papa Meat is his second channel, and we get to see more of Hunter. Did I get that right? Hunter, I think his name is. We get to see more of Hunter, and he is such a likable guy as well. I think that's a very common theme amongst my favorite YouTube channels. The people are just very likable and down to earth and normal people. And on that channel, he just seems to have so much more fun and it's 100% worth a watch. If you want to experience some absurdity, quite a bit of absurdity, and if you find grotesqueness interesting, and humorous because (laughs) he makes these drawing videos where he will make, I wouldn't call them caricatures, but abominations of individuals. So he would take PewDiePie and make him some kind of abomination. And the drawing videos are amazing. And Hunter has this amazing ability to embody characters. He has great voices for every character that he makes, and he creates these really bizarre and disturbing narratives around the drawing. So that's the second channel that I have. It's a it's a channel where when I see a video, I click on it and watch it, and I know I'm going to have a good time. The last one here is a channel that I never thought, a channel topic area that I never thought I would watch, and I don't watch it for the topic. It's called The Iron Snail. And I watch it for the host of this channel. His name is Michael. And it's a fashion channel. But the way that I described it in a comment I left, I said, I feel as though I'm watching a fever dream. Because (laughs) it is such a unique editing style and presentation style that it can't be replicated. I don't think anybody could do what Michael does unless it seems as though they are just trying to rip off Michael. It is 
so 100% personal to this guy. It's excellent, excellent stuff there, even though I don't care about fashion. Can you tell? I'm dressed like a slob all the time, or I'm just wearing the same thing, which is really the route that I go, okay, I found a green hoodie I like. I'm going to wear that for 12 months, and then we'll see where we go from there. There are a bunch of other channels. I can't list them all. Uh, I started watching Jack Septicai last year. He's a really likable person as well. Enjoy his channel. Watch Gringa, Jenny L. If you enjoy watches, all of the watch people. I I watched all of them over the last year, and that's actually how I found the Iron Snail. So I'll, I'll just leave it there as far as YouTube channels. Those three will keep you busy for a while. Now let's jump to my favorite music. Over the last couple of years, I really struggled to find any new music that I enjoyed because nothing seemed interesting, nothing seemed challenging, nothing was refreshing. But this last year, the YouTube algorithm praised me with some incredible new music. The first one is a group called Men I Trust. I think my camera is overexposed, but Men I Trust this is a three-piece band, four-piece band. I don't know how many people are in it, but it is a very jazzy, calming, dreamy style of music. And it is probably one of my most listened to artists this year. I don't have Spotify, so I don't get that thing. And this is one of the bands where I can put this on and just put on a playlist and leave it playing at a lower volume in the background all day long while I'm playing a video game, well, a video game Minecraft. That's the only game that I play. <laughs> or being in a voice chat. It's the only group that I'm able to do that with because it is, you're able to passively listen to it. But if you tune into it, if you actually focus on it, it is, it's always going to be good. And I actually discovered another artist in this list because of an interview I watched with them. So that's the first group, Men I Trust. Look up their garage sessions. They're incredible. Or just look up any other studio stuff. Second is a group called Viagra Boys. <laughs> I know it's a vulgar sounding name, and yeah, it's a bit vulgar in, in terms of the content of the music, or at least it comes across vulgar. But this is almost like a jazz fusion group. I, kn I know they would probably hate being described as that. But I imagine if a bunch of punk kids learned to play jazz, this is what it would be. And it is outstanding. It's their standout track. It's not on this album, but their standout track, the one that brought me in, was called Sports. And the thing that's fascinating about their music videos is they record the vocals live for the music videos, which is... <laughs> Pretty darn unique. And if you're looking for a different style of music, something that you will likely not have heard before, look up the Viagra Boys. Absolutely adore that group and really enjoyable. Next up is the artist that I discovered because of Men I Trust, and that would be Chet Baker. I have no idea how I had never listened to Chet Baker before, but he is a trumpet player and a vocalist. And just like my microphones, the singers that I enjoy have particularly smooth voices. They're not harsh. They aren't overly bright. They aren't piercing. They are <sighs> very soft, almost as though they're sighing into the microphone. That doesn't do it justice. That makes it sound like it's effortless, but it is... Chet Baker was incredibly talented. I think he's passed away at this point. But the collection was, I think, 12 bucks for four CDs. And it is, oh, I'm sorry, is this eight CDs? <laughs> eight CDs, eight albums worth of music for 10 or 12 bucks. It is amazing. Easily has become one of my favorite vocalists. And probably, I'm not a huge trumpet music listener, but one of my favorite trumpet players, of course, Louis Armstrong will probably always be number one for everybody. Or Wynton Marsalis, Mar Marsalis, Mary, Mar Marcia, I don't know how to pronounce his name. And the final music group. Wow, how long have we been going? I've spent way too long on this. Motion City Soundtrack. This was 
purely a nostalgia pick. I put this on and this is their album, Commit This to Memory. I listened to this for probably two months straight because I really did not like this year. And a lot of what I chose was nostalgia driven because it was the watch gringa. I was watching one of her videos and she actually mentioned why people why she believes people are gravitating towards more vintage inspired watches and she proposed the idea that people are going nostalgic because they want to go back to a simpler time and once i heard her say that i said that's exactly what i've been doing this entire year and this music album this music album why did i word it that way motion city soundtrack commit this to memory a nearly perfect album produced by, by Mark Hoppus, and two months of this was a perfect escape for me because I needed it. And definitely took me back to simpler times before tyranny and being 666 days to slow the... Whatever. I hate everything. Next, let's jump to my favorite movies of the last year. I watched a bunch of movies, and a lot of them could be my favorite, but... I am selecting the first movies that I watched during 2021 because they were so impactful. I needed to see these at the time that I saw them, and it was perfect. And that is the Night at the Museum collection. I know this is not ever going to be considered high art. It's not going to be some kind of Academy Award winning AFI top films ever. But... At the time that I watched these, at the beginning of January 2021, I was feeling real down in the dumps, and I needed some kind of escapism, but I needed to... I didn't know I needed it, but this presented a world that was full of magic and hope and possibilities, and that was something that I needed. I know that sounds cheesy, I know that sounds corny, but I needed it at, at that time, and I loved every single one of these. The first one, really a special film. Another couple of films that I could have mentioned, which I'm surprised by, was Paddington 1 and 2. And I also found an amazing Twitter because of that. <laughs> There's a Twitter account. I can't remember what it's called. But every single day, they post a tweet of Paddington photoshopped into another movie. It's the only good thing going on on Twitter. <laughs> it's brilliant. But Paddington 1 and 2, some of the sweetest movies I have seen in my entire life. Absolutely love them. Unironically, incredible films. And so it's the exact same story as Night at the Museum. It had that magic, that sweetness that I needed at that exact moment. And I have this listed under films, but I guess it could be TV because it is a PBS miniseries, or I guess it does list it as a film. But it's a Ken Burns film called The Dust Bowl. This is depressing. This was horrifying to watch. I learned about The Dust Bowl in school like everybody in America. You don't understand the impact, the real world implications of it. And watching this, I just realized, oh my gosh, people were much hardier back then. They were much more, I don't want to say durable because it sounds like I'm talking about a product, but they just, they survived. They just did it. And the thing that made that click for me was their farms were destroyed. Their farmland was worthless. Instead of sitting around, they said, okay, I'm going to pack up and move. Or prior to that, they said, oh, there's not much economic opportunity here. I'm going to pack my family into this car drive across the country and buy a farm and become a farmer. I don't see that kind of same initiative or drive or robustness in, in a lot of individuals nowadays. And that was just quite a realization. That was a really great watch. I also watched a bunch of mini... I guess I'll, guess I'll talk about those in the TV. So those are my favorite movies of the year really enjoyed the Night at the Museum series, Paddington 1 and 2, and that Dust Bowl film from Ken Burns. Now, TV series. 
And this goes back to Motion City Soundtrack, actually. There's a song from Motion City Soundtrack, Soundtrack where the singer Justin Courtney Pierre says, I fell asleep watching Veronica Mars again, and I had never watched Veronica Mars. I found a complete set of Veronica Mars DVDs for, I think, 30 bucks, and I watched all of them, including the movie and including the new season, and it was some of the most fun I've had all year. This is another situation where it was pure escapism for me. While I was watching it, I was thinking, I'm going to move to California and solve crimes as a private detective. <laughs> Albeit, I'm not going to be a 19-year-old blonde girl who's five foot tall, but I will do that. <laughs> and it will be a blast. It really made me miss California quite a lot, and I would love to move back there. But without getting too political, it has been destroyed by people running it. <laughs> About as political a statement as can be made. <laughs> without getting too political. So that was incredibly enjoyable and really a fun series if you are looking for just to fall in love with Kristen Bell, Kirsten Bell. I don't know. It's Kristen Bell, I think. All around a great series from beginning to end. The other series that I was talking about were, was, were, was America, The Story of Us, and The Men Who Built America. I watched both of those, and again, it just reminded me how much work, how much suffering, and how how many sacrifices were made for the country to be in the situation that it's in right now. It is insane what people had to go through to create the system and the environment of complete luxury that we all live in. I know a lot of people don't feel as though we live in a fortunate time or a luxurious time, but looking back at the 1800s, every single person is living in a lap of luxury, even though it may not seem like it. And that's not saying there aren't injustices. I get it. But the amount of sacrifice and work that went into creating a country that is as comfortable for everyone as the U.S. is for everybody who's living here is absolutely amazing. And I know somebody's going to find a way to get mad about that. I don't care. Get mad. Whatever. Okay, let's talk about more escapism. And this will be favorite books. And yeah, if, if, if you've been following me at all anywhere, you know what it's going to be. It is the complete Harry Potter series. I've picked this as my favorite thing of a month. And then my favorite thing of the year, <laughs> and now I'm presenting it here as well. You, I guess I've spoiled one of my picks for the Geeks Rising thing, but I never finished reading this series. I never finished watching the movies, so I had no idea how it ended. I don't know how I escaped spoilers for so long, but I had no idea how it ended. And reading this last book, I read through it in a day and a half, two days, I think, it was the perfect ending to this story. And this entire series, for me, I picked it up again because, first off, I had never finished it. And secondly, I needed that escapism because it's, it's a common theme. This last year sucked. It was a bad year. And I needed something. I needed to experience a world that had a little bit of magic, a little bit of hope in it. <laughs> Because I'll tell you what, this year certainly feels hopeless. I don't know about you. So Harry Potter, that entire series, was really important, really impactful, and a beautiful ending to that entire saga. 100% worth a watch. Worth a watch. Worth a read. Worth a listen, and I'm sure worth a watch. I still haven't finished, I still haven't watched the last movie yet. They kind of screwed up the ending of the... The second to last movie, though, there's there's one thing that they didn't get right, which I was kind of upset about. But I can't talk about that because I don't want to spoil it. The second favorite book is a book. It's another book that I picked as one of my favorite things throughout the year. A book called A Man and His Watch by Matt Horanick. This encapsulates why I really kind of fell in love with watches it's because you're able to impart stories and life experience onto them 
the story that came to mind, it's it's not even a particularly expensive. It's a, it's a downright dirt cheap watch. It is a waiter was waiting on Bill Murray and Bill Murray asked him, what time is it? The waiter looked down and he couldn't see what it was. Bill Murray took off a Timex Weekender or a Timex Standard that has Indiglo on it and handed it to the waiter and said, here you go. Now you will always know what time it is. And that story is in here. And that's what really drew me into watches or allowed me to adopt this idea or this romanticism about watches. And that's another thing that I really needed, something to give me hope that there will be something that I can pass down to somebody at some point and it might actually mean something and there will be stories surrounding it because in such a disposable culture where everything is meant to be used for a couple of years and then thrown in the garbage, including smartwatches, the new smartwatches, those are good for what, four years? And then they're obsolete. They stop getting updated. The internal battery will die and they will stop servicing them. All of that with a wristwatch. Yeah, it's complicated. Yeah, it's complex. But there are still watchmakers who will be able to service this and they are built so well that they will last for 50, 60, 70 years, maybe even more, depending on how well you take care of it, how frequently you get it serviced, all of that. And this book really solidified that idea for me. Absolutely worth it. Great, beautiful photographs and really nice stories in there. And the last thing is, I guess, favorite watches. And the this entire year will be encapsulated. I, I only think of one watch in terms of 2021. And that is, let me wipe it down before I put it in front of the camera. The Tudor black bay 58 focus this is the watch that i wore probably the most out of the year it is what i classify as a somewhat basic bitch watch the way i described it i did a review of this on my second on my watch channel i called it the pumpkin spice latte of watches because it is kind of that popular basic watch that <laughs> It's like getting white girl wasted. It's the white girl wasted of watches, but I love it. It is simple. It's time only. It has a beautiful vintage inspiration behind it, but it does have some history to it still. It's not just a brand looking back at other brands watches and saying, I like that, that, that I'm going to take that and make a watch because I don't want to do design work. I want to take from them. Tudor is taking from their back catalog, I think a 1958 dive watch. And that's what this is based on. Obviously, modern materials, modern movement, modern technology that makes it very robust. But as far as the inspiration and history, it is based on their own watch. And that is, I'm okay with it being a bit basic. I'm fine with that because I bought it because I enjoy it. And this is... The, my 2021 watch, it's it will always be imbued with the last year, even though it was a crappy year. <laughs> and I will wear it for another 50 years, probably. And I think that's all that I wanted to talk about. That's all that I had on my physical list. For all the podcast listeners, that's me shaking paper. I bet somebody could turn that into some kind of sound effects. Anyway... That's it. Next week, I will talk about, what is it, plans for content over the upcoming year and talking about how the last year went, analyzing all of that, which will be, it's always interesting for me. I hope it's interesting for you. Give give you some insight into the, the backside. Is that the proper word? I don't know. The back end? That sounds filthy too. The inner workings of a YouTube channel and and how I approach it. All right, that's it for today. If you enjoyed it, thumbs up, hated it, thumbs down. That's how I end all my videos now, I guess. But I hope you have an amazing Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Next Sunday, I will talk at you. Very happy new year. Let's make 2022 whatever the hell it 
ends up being. All right, I'll talk to you later. Bye. This has been a Geeks Rising production. Your executive producer is Bandrew Scott. For more information, head over to www.geeksrising.com.